Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Pinnacle Bank Arena and the plaza and the new iconic art piece by Ed Carpenter. Are you glad to be here tonight for this? Yeah. The art piece is called Harvest, but before we get to that, we have the wonderful opportunity to experience tonight some music. Please welcome, if you would, these fine-looking young people up here uh, who are from the Nebraska Academy of Vocal Arts, which is directed by Judy Welsh, with musical direction from Julie uh, Wilson. I don't think I came too close on that. I beg your pardon. Uh, and the first selection for them tonight will be, I am a small part of the world. I just quickly want to add, this is written by Sally K. Albrecht. And the final piece we'll do is the beautiful Nebraska, which has been arranged by Christina Ensign.
How about that? How about one more round of applause for that beautiful, beautiful song? I'm honored to be joined here tonight. Uh, by my fellow members of the West Haymarket Joint Public Agency. Uh, as mayor of the city, I sit on the Joint Public Agency, which uh, built this arena in the West Haymarket area. And doing much of the work was City Councilman Carl Eskridge, who's here tonight, and University of Nebraska Regent uh, Tim Clare, who are our partners on the board. And you'll be hearing from them tonight, shortly. Uh, this group, again, oversees the operation of both Pinnacle Bank Arena and the development in this West Haymarket area. Most of our meetings are filled with various reports and budget and budgets and dry information and agreements. It's all very important, but it's not nearly as much fun as being here tonight and dedicating this sculpture. I think here tonight also are council persons uh, Roy Christensen and Cindy Lamb, and I think former Mayor Colleen Sang is here tonight. Please welcome them to the dedication. <laughs> also joining us tonight is Robert Duncan, who is one of the chairs of the Lincoln Partners for Public Art Development. And this organization is in the city is, is working to build on our city's outstanding public art collection by adding significant pieces of truly world-class quality. Tonight, we officially welcome Harvest to that collection. Robert will introduce our final speaker this evening, the artist himself, Ed Carpenter. Ed is an internationally acclaimed artist based in Portland, Oregon. And we're honored to have him and his family with us this weekend, his wife, Lauren Sheehan, and Zoe and Luke Carpenter are also here. Uh, and we hope they're gonna have a very good time in this great city of ours. And yes, the timing of this is not totally coincidence. Ed and his family are going to the Husker game tomorrow with the Oregon Ducks. And we'll see what happens there. I told them earlier it's going to be a close one. Uh, they might get the last quack out of this. We're not, we're not sure how this is going to work. When we envisioned the arena, we wanted it to be a gathering place for the entire state. And as you will hear from Ed, Harvest is very much a Nebraska project. You'll see a list of firms on the program that actually built and installed the sculpture. And those firms are from Nebraska. Ed was, has named the sculpture Harvest, a word that can be interpreted in a number of ways, just like the sculpture itself. We asked our current state poet, Twilight Hansen, if she had a poem with the theme of Harvest for tonight's program. And she shared with us a piece called How to Live in the Heartland. Twyla is unable to be with us this evening, but I'd like to read the ending from that poem, How to Live in the Heartland. And it goes like this. Comb the hills with a giant combine. Believe in a basket to feed the world. In October, die with the first killing frost. Surrender it all to the fiery, cold earth. And when the timing seems right, rise up. Give it tomorrow another go. I hope you'll take the time to read the entire poem, which is printed in your program. The Heartland truly is a special place, and Twyla captures the beauty and the challenges and the determination of the people living here uh, in a very beautiful way. But before we move to the other speakers, uh, the last thing I would just like to say is, is something I can never say enough, 
and that is to express appreciation for all of the people uh, who have made it possible for Harvest to come alive here tonight. Uh, this former rail yard continues to become more exciting and vibrant, and Harvest is a perfect touch. And as with everything else that's so great that's been going on in Lincoln in the last few years, it's all a matter of a large number of people working together, uh, people interested in public art, people interested in other cultural aspects of the city, people interested in developing the economy of the city. And I want to thank all of you so much for all your work on so many projects in this city that just keeps us moving ahead every year. So with that, I would invite Carl and Tim and Ed, or Robert and Ed to the podium. And following that, we'll turn this huge switch up here and you'll have your first experience with Harvest. Thank you very much. Good evening, I'm Carl Eskridge, serve on City Council, and thank you all for being here this evening. You know, public art involves people, a lot of people, as it well should. But it begins with the artist, Ed Carpenter, whose vision and dedicated efforts and inspiration and expertise helped to make this beautiful piece, this center stone piece for this great project here perfectly situated next to Pinnacle Bank Arena. Again, one of our important public arts projects in the city that we're growing and enhancing every day. You know, Ed's work also involved many other artists, people that worked him, with him, many local workers who did a lot of the heavy lifting, literally making and installing the art that rises here before us and wanna thank you, those who may be here this evening, want to thank you for your role in this important work. Now, this is also a public space, and I recognize, I want to recognize the leadership of Mayor Beitler and Regent Tim Clare as my JPA colleagues for your important and valuable stewardship in this whole effort. Uh, throughout the time that the West Haymarket JPA and the Pinnacle Bank Arena JPA has all been involved, they have been there from the very start, and I want to thank them for that. There have been four different council people during that time. My friends Doug Emery and Jean Carroll served, but the very first one was Jane Snyder, who was the initial chair of the West Haymarket JPA. And I remember that day, I'm sure you remember that day five years ago, when we first broke ground, not very far from this exact location. And the inspiration that it was for Jane in her final days to be there, to be so enthusiastic and active and excited about that moment in time. I'll never forget that inspiring moment. More than anything else, art is all about inspiration. The artist is inspired by an idea, a vision, a message that he or she is compelled to share with other people. Ed Carpenter has dedicated his whole life to this work of, of inspiring ordinary people with public art, and he's done it around the world, and we're so lucky to have a piece of Ed's here in Lincoln. With his 45-foot tall harvest, Ed has created a work that itself is inspired by this unique context in which it sits. And it really is an interesting context because this is both the oldest and the newest part of our city. First, when you look at harvest and when the lights come on, you'll see it more clearly. It'll jump out at you you begin to see certain images that are there. You will see this sheaf of wheat that comes out at us. It reminds us of our agricultural background in Nebraska and also of the hay market and this, this agricultural market that, that was in this part of city in its early days. 
If you look deeper within the harvest, you will see basketry. And it will remind you of the first Americans who, who were here in this area. There were salt fields just to our west, and they would come here to gather salt. And it was those same salt fields that attracted the earliest settlers who came to Lincoln to make a life and live in this community. If you look even deeper, you will see a net, a basketball net. Only if we could have a net that large in there, maybe we would have a chance. <laughs> Second, in addition to the motifs, these familiar cultural motifs from our past, also we see that this piece has definitely a futuristic message with its intricate engineering, with the overall look and presentation, with the use of modern materials and state-of-the-art lighting. It was with all eyes pointed toward the future that the West Haymarket and this arena were all developed. Harvest, in addition to standing for the past, also stands for that future. That future harvest of creativity and energy and talent that will be produced here continually and all through the years. It will build a brighter and a better Lincoln. So I want to thank you, Ed, for providing this important image for our community, we will treasure it. Thank you. Tim? Good evening. My name is Tim Clare. I'm a member of the University of Nebraska Board of Regents and uh, serve on the joint public agency with Mayor Beitler and, and Councilman Eskridge. And I'm pleased to be here tonight to help celebrate another point of pride for the arena and for our community. Now, I've had the opportunity to, to meet with Ed a few times. In fact, we met a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was about three weeks ago, and uh, talked about the, the project. And then we also said, now, wait a second, there was a, there's a game that, that next day. And I said, have you ever been to a Nebraska game? He said, nope, never been to one. I said, pretty passionate fans. He said, really? Give me an example. How passionate are they? And I said, well, Last game last year, we went up to our seats, Amy and I, and, and we noticed that there was a, a woman sitting there who'd been there, a season ticket holder, for years. And she was sitting by herself. And we said, well, where, where's, your, where's your husband? She said, uh, well, he, he died. We said, oh, my gosh. What ha Sorry, you know, uh, couldn't you find a friend to come to the funeral or come to uh, the, the game? And she said, she said, no, they're all at the funeral. He said, that's pretty passionate. So we're, Ed, Ed's from uh, Portland, as, as we've alluded to, and, and we're pleased that you're able to be here tonight. Whether that has, again, anything to do with the, uh, the Oregon game tomorrow or not, I don't know, but we're honored to have him here and to have the opportunity to tell him in person how much we appreciate his work and the artistic talents that he's shared with our community. And that's even if he does cheer for Oregon tomorrow. Uh, but we did get him some, some tickets to the game, and as a condition of the tickets, we, we made sure that uh, he, he promised anyway that he would wear the red shirt as well. So we got him some Nebraska shirts to go with that. Um, so the arts play a very important uh, uh, part of our community, and it's a great contributor to the richness and quality of life in our community. And we believe that Harvest will be an asset to the Nebraskans here in, in Lincoln as well as throughout the entire state for many years to come and that many, many folks from around the, the country and, and certainly the state of Nebraska will come to enjoy this art. Uh, but tonight is just the latest example of the way that, that the Pinnacle Bank Arena is enhancing the community here in Lincoln. The arena is a, is a great success story for the University of Nebraska and for the city of Lincoln, a project that all of us are proud of. It was built on time and on budget utilizing the talents of local companies. Similarly, as Mayor Beitler alluded to, the harvest was in fact built on time and on budget by entirely Nebraska firms. That's a great point of pride for us. Not only was the arena completed on time and on budget, but it has infused downtown Lincoln and our entire community with new energy and momentum. Look at the development happening all around us. 
we're sitting here, we can watch the volleyball game uh, and on the cube. I mean, it's just, it's just energizing. And the sense of excitement that you feel around here is unparalleled. This has been a transformational project for the city, and it's one that I'm very proud that we continue to gather to celebrate the success story that the, the Pinnacle Bank Arena has brought to our community. Ed, this project is going to add to that, and we are so thankful to you for creating the, the piece that you've created and to you and your family for being here tonight. So thank you very much. Wow, this is going to be great. This is going to blow you away. This is so exciting. I'm Robert Duncan. Uh, as many of you know, my wife and I are passionate about the arts. And I'm really pleased to be part of LPAD, uh, the, the Committee to Advance the Public Art in Lincoln. We're, uh, our goal is to make Lincoln a world-class art city. This is the 10th piece that we've installed in the last few years. We're well on our way to that goal. Uh, and it's with the support of the mayor and the city council and the people of Lincoln that make all this happen. We're going to make Lincoln a richer and a better and a more wonderful place to live. Um, Ed just pointed out, I'm sitting next to Ed Carpenter, the harvest moon that's out here in the east. Uh, that's really appropriate for the, uh, because it amplifies the name of this piece. It's my privilege to introduce Ed Carpenter. On the back of your program, there's a, a bio. It tells you a little bit about Ed. What it doesn't tell you is that he has a beautiful piece in Council Bluffs. If you cross over the Broadway Bridge into Council Bluffs, the lighting that you see above you, that's Ed Carpenter. He has a beautiful piece at the airport in Wichita, um, uh, sending up the stairway. Um, I, many of you may not have a chance to fly out of Wichita very often, but I go to Wichita frequently. And I haven't seen that piece, but I'm really looking forward to it. What, what I can tell you about Ed, beyond the biography that you see here, he's a really a hardworking man. He's been here several times and worked long hours, uh, all day and into the evening, many, many times. Um, he's very um, congenial. He, he, um, the people that work with him love him and love the project. Um, he's a kind and gentle man and a wonderful artist and I'm more than proud to introduce Ed Carpenter. Ed? Hello. Any chance I could get you to come in a little closer? It feel, feels as if you're way far away. Yeah, that's better. So anyway, what a pleasure to be here once again. Uh, first, I want to start by asking everybody who helped with this project in any way or is a family member of somebody who helped with this project to raise your hand right now. Quite a few. So, so I want to start by thanking all of you. Yeah. It's, it's quite a team of collaborators, and especially I want to thank Puritt Manufacturing, Hampton Construction, Davis Erection, Project Control, and the Mayor's Office. So give them a hand. And in addition, there were uh, landscape consultants, electrical firms, um, all kinds of people that are too numerous to uh, mention, all of whom had employees that were out here night and day uh, getting us to the point we are here a month ahead of schedule. And um, it was a real pleasure getting to know them. It was a real pleasure also getting to know some of you. Um, I got a tour of your fair city on a couple of occasions. I got invited to people's homes. I was given a condo for a week when I was here. and. Uh, it's been just a great warm welcome from everybody in Lincoln. And uh, I, I really appreciate it. I, I was made part of the family, so thank you. 
When I was working here last month, I was approached by a local citizen who came up right over here, and he said to me, what is it? <laughs> well, actually, that's a really excellent question, and you would think that I would have an answer to that. But um, I have to admit that that uh, question really has no answer. Really? Well, why would that be? How could that be? Um, if I tell you about my search for the title Harvest, uh, you may see that uh, how this uh, question speaks to the difference between poetry and prose. A declaration and suggestion, clarity and ambiguity, and the discovery of meanings over time. About two months ago, I started accumulating a list of possible titles, knowing that I would need to decide by tonight on a title, or actually a few days ago, because things had to be printed. Um, I've, never, I've never enjoyed the struggle to find a title until I did. Uh, it sort of means making two works of art, but it's, it's a very gratifying thing when, when a title finally comes that seems to fit. Um, I made a big long list. Eventually the list contained about a hundred words and phrases, most of which repeatedly failed the most important test, which is that it suggests simultaneously a number of values, images, and metaphors um, that I have grown to associate with the sculpture over more than four years that I've been working on it. In my design process, scale and form come first. Eventually, though, vague outlines of a variety of meanings and metaphors reveal themselves to me during that process. And they have all sorts of different connotations rather than definitions. In other words, they are more poetic than prosaic, and so a bit uh, difficult to condense into a single line or phrase. Had I known last month that my title was to be Harvest, I could have reported that to the curious citizen who I met over here, and perhaps that would have satisfied him, or maybe not, maybe it would have completely confounded him, who knows. In any case, I like harvest because it is both a noun and a verb, and it suggests process and product simultaneously, and it fits in with the theme of plenty that is associated with the sheaf of wheat, which is one of the obvious visual references for the form of the sculpture. Sheaf of wheat imagery, of course, can be found on government seals, currency bills, church engravings, and ancient monuments going back for centuries. In addition to meaning, meanings associated with plenty and abundance is an additional theme having to do with the strength and community. In that the individual stalks of wheat are weak, but when they are bound together into a sheaf, they're strong. This brings us back to the collaborators responsible for the sculpture that we celebrate tonight. Alone, I could not have built this myself, but in community, with many of you, we have succeeded. So, as the children's choir comes back up and sings again, and as the lights of harvest slowly come up to reveal themselves to you, perhaps we can feel confident to answer the question, what is it? Simply with the title harvest, knowing that it is a harvest of light and a harvest of collaboration, of community pride, and of the abundance of Nebraska. And perhaps it is also a harvest of other qualities that have yet to reveal themselves. Thank you, and go Ducks. <laughs> Okay, no more words. We're going to, Ed and I are going to flip the switch, and hopefully you all will help us count down. You ready to do that? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thank you, that was beautiful. I forgot to introduce my family to you. <laughs> An important thing. My wife, Lauren, and my son, Luke, my daughter, Zoe. Lauren and Luke came out from Oregon with us, and Zoe's here from Washington, D.C. So thank you all so much for coming tonight. Ed, thank you again so very, very much. And for all of you, I think it will be as for me as the years go by. We'll remember the first time we turned on these lights as we enjoy this year after year after year. Thank you for being here tonight. Have a great weekend.